Welcome to our series of learning modules that focuses on the value of research in patient care. Our objective is to educate clinical staff on the scientific method and how to apply it to everyday clinical practice. In this, the third section of Module 1, we will explore a simple checklist for verifying the quality of a given study. In the prior sections of this module, you learned about good research and the basics of a literature review. As you conduct your review, you will need to evaluate the quality of the evidence that you gather. In this regard, a checklist can be useful. The checklist we see here was created by Strobe, which is a collection of statisticians and other methodologists. This checklist covers the sections of a quantitatively oriented article, providing you with reminders of the content you should find there. For example, the introduction should clearly state the study's background and objectives, and the methods section should help you easily identify items related to study design and participants. Continuing the methods section, we see criteria related to variables and data sources, bias, study size, which suggests how probable it is that researchers are able to detect a desired effect, and statistical methods, which lets you know how appropriate the analytic techniques are. Looking at the results section, this part of the article should thoroughly describe the participants in the study, including demographics such as age, sex, and other clinical information. Continuing in the results section, we see an item and sub-items related to the main findings of the study. This section may also include information on estimates and their precision, and any adjustments to those estimates. The discussion section of the article should include a description of study limitations, interpretation of results, and whether results are generalizable to a broader population. As we have seen, using a checklist is an organized way to verify that the attributes of good research are clearly conveyed throughout the article. Finally, here is an example of a literature review table. This will help you evaluate the cumulative evidence you have gathered, which includes each study's population, design, intervention, outcome measures, results, and strengths and weaknesses. Now let's fill in the table using the article we presented in Section 2 of this module. The title of the study is Risk and Patterns of Secondary Complications in Surgical Inpatients. The authors are Joachim and colleagues. The journal is JAMA Surgery. And the year is 2014. Next, the population is surgical inpatients with a sample size of almost 900,000. The researchers use a retrospective study design, and the outcome measures are 30-day secondary complications and 30-day mortality. Results show that certain index events are associated with higher odds of developing secondary complications. Strengths include a large sample size, and weaknesses include the time frame of data collection. As we have seen, using a checklist and literature review table is a simple and organized way to verify the overall quality of a journal article. This education series is made possible by a generous gift from the Stanford University School of Nursing Alumni, in collaboration with Stanford HealthCare, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, and Stanford Medicine. Congratulations, you have completed Module 1.